new sleeper PC project Mac G4 from the early 2000s it is uh, looking really nice it has even a floppy drive still and the CD-ROM drive uh, hidden under this flap and I will be converting this to my new gamer PC what better to show up at a LAN party than a Mac G4 and I really like that it has handles you can uh, pick it up and it seems very nice <laughs> so I ordered from Laser Hive conversion kit which will enable me to replace this back panel and have the mounts for the motherboard uh, on this computer. I really like that uh, when you open it the entire motherboard folds out. The power supply will remain here. Basically you have to remove these. It's like a hex key. Oh, yeah. I've removed all the four corners and now I've removed these panels. You have to be very careful not to scratch these panels. The Mac logo seems to be attached as well somehow. Probably I have to do it from the inside. Let's open this part first then. First remove all the motherboards and such stuff from this. Okay, I found the final screw. Of course, they put it under the cooler. So they had screw here, here, and apparently they have under here. That's what's keeping it inside now. I guess let's try to get these hard drives out, maybe. The Apple logo is attached. Pinch these together and then you can take off the panel. Yay, it worked. Oh, it has still some screws for the hinges. So the power supply is held in by three bolts here and then this one bolt here. going into this fan here and here's a plug that I need to disconnect before I can get the power supply out. She's out! Oh. Here and here. Try to pop off the outside panel. Just pull it to one side and then raise it up. <laughs> I locked myself out. So to get the floppy drive and CD-ROM drive out, you have to screw, unscrew from these two screws, and then you can pull this out from here. The underside, you have to also remove these two screws to get the cable holder out and these plastics came out all with some clips and just be careful this part here I just forced it over uh, this hole it's really tough but you can get it out without removing the plastic here so it, it does slip over it it's tight but it will work get ready. oh my god maybe it's better even to remove it for now this one I will need later I might as well remove the speaker for now as well. Oh, 
there's still this plastic here that I probably should remove so I wouldn't break it. Getting off this back panel was definitely a pain. Uh, it has uh, many clips here, 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 so it has really a lot of these clips and they're really hard to get but uh, if you take your time you can get this off. I also have to remove these uh, four screws for the latch mechanism. Now this uh, metal thing here was just glued on so I had to just pry it off. Uh, instructions say to drill out 10 rivets from the rear I.O. panel. I got the I.O. panel out and the easiest was to drill from the side all these 10 rivets. So I think it was this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And then from this side here it was this row from up to down. Ah yeah, it was really easy, just 3 millimeter bit. So now I have uh, taped this template to the place. These are the markers which hold it, so it points die or shield there. And here's also holes. So now I have to drill out all these holes and cut off these higher parts here uh, so they wouldn't intrude with my motherboard. I used the big bite tool here to cut off all of these standoffs. Now I'll cut uh, this part here, otherwise it will interfere with the and always wear glasses and maybe air protection I forgot to put mine on and I regret it put in the rear shield it had one, two, three, four, five, six nuts, bolts and washers and from the other side I used uh, this tool that's included in the kit and for the nuts I use these to hold them on the other side. Strangely it seems that these two bolts are hitting this area. I don't know maybe I put them on the wrong way or something but and I also cut these short so I don't know these seem very long to make these uh, holes not interfere I had to use this dremel bit and I just squeeze like this and I just cut it and then going through here, this one uh, will also interfere this hole. So for that I uh, used a box knife. So it's actually already cut it and come off. I'm pretty happy how this turned out. It uh, still seems to be working nicely. Made hole here, 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 and here I cut uh, off one of these pins and for cooling I got this Alpha Cool SD30 280 millimeter radiator and this one will go uh, to the bottom here and I'll cut the hole out for it so it can blow air down and out. I would say this radiator fits very nicely here. It does have a crease here and on the other side as well. I'll probably push it all the way against the wall. I'll mark it and then I'll cut it out from the bottom. There's quite some space between the radiator and the motherboard. As you can see the uh, raising parts, it's like at least two centimeters. And I have to keep in mind that on top of the radiator there will be fans, so it will be a bit higher. Now I will drill a hole into both corners and that enables me to draw a very correct line on the other side of the case because it's difficult to cut with the angle grinder inside of this case. I'll do it from the other side. So I drill through these holes, I mark the line and the line I also didn't make exactly on the corner but I left like a couple of millimeters here and here I'm going through the second row. I can always make the hole bigger but I cannot make it smaller anymore. Ready. So it seems to be 
fitting how it currently looks from here. Uh, I think I can make this work. Uh, I will use washers on the bottom. Yeah, that was a bit stupid of me not to uh, leave here tiny nudges. While it seems to have exactly the correct screw holes and it fits very nicely in here, even this uh, button here. The problem is that the fan is on the other side and there's like maybe a centimeter of space between the back wall and the power supply. So I definitely want to turn the power supply around. This hole I know how I can get. I can just put it with a screw and washer. So here I have to drill out. I'll use three millimeters. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is correct line. So uh, for the power supply, I drilled the new hole here and here and cut out a larger portion over here. This screw I only need to dent a bit but it's uh, holding it tight to a tree. The laser height came also with this. I don't really see why I can keep the original cover here. And probably I'll also try to put this thing back here. I'll have to cut this plastic part here but I think it will still look good. On the inside, I have also managed to fasten the radiator, put some fans on top, or uh, bolts. This is the only one I drilled through. Well, I should have kept corners here, but uh, since I didn't, then I just used the uh, M3 uh, 15 millimeter bolts with uh, huge washers, and uh, this radiator is not going anywhere. I added. Uh, weather stripping that went here, so now it's completely sealed. So all there that goes through the radiator is definitely outside of the case. Today's goal is to install this uh, cigarette lighter ashtray into the Mac G4. I do want to install it so that these uh, buttons here are poking out from the previous zip drive location and the DVD drive I want to leave as it is. So I will need to modify, I have already a bit marked with a marker. So I will cut from here and bend it back and hopefully this will work. It really needs to be a bit lower, so for that I need to cut the uh, to the south then you can see I already actually marked it before so I'll have to cut this part off as well. It's a pretty pretty good fit. Uh, the lower end is now exactly uh, on level. Uh, from upper side I will have to cut this tiny tab from the front panel. I really am happy that this side of the button is exactly, I don't have to cut from the side. I opened this up so I would have a bit larger gap here. I want to only cut this tiny strip here and there. It's only a matter of like a millimeter because I will press it, it won't open if I tilt this a bit. Okay. thinking if I can make the unit go lower like half a mil then maybe it will go exactly past it. Now it's like almost working. I got it now slightly lower. I properly attached the front panel. Seems like I got it positioned. Now I need to create bolt holes here to fasten it in place. I think the back side will be the most difficult because it's the other side of this panel is not removable. Uh, this gap is exactly as high as this 
part here. So this one works fine. And I think even like the fitment is actually perfect, I would say. I ended up using epoxy resin. I don't know if you can see it from here. I don't want to move it right now. But to both sides I applied epoxy. So now I'm waiting for it to dry. Finally parts arrived. I'm going with the AS Rock Riptide B650 M motherboard and then of course the Ryzen 7800X3D and I went with the Aqua Computer Complex Cryos Next water block also crucial T700 2TB PCIe Gen 5 um, SSD for thermal paste I went with MX6 I mean I've been using MX4 for a long time this Arctic hasn't let me down and a bottle of distilled water never using colored uh, ever again my previous CPU cooler fins were totally clogged from quality brand colored liquids we, we do it. Oh, you need attention, I see, yes, yes, yes. Oh, Mr. Ina. Yes. Will you help me? Um, I'm reusing my 3070 graphics card, and I have to say that the space between the M.2 and the graphics card, it's, it's maybe half a millimeter. Now, the only other problem I'm having is that I cannot mount these inputs and outputs of the water block to the upper part because these would uh, hit this uh, gap here and cutting here won't help because I still have the power supply. So I'll have to route the water cooling from below. And the only thing now that still is a problem is that the rams will hit this part here. Uh, this here, so I'll have to cut this tiny gap out from here. Otherwise the space between the video card and the cooling fan seems okay. I also had to move the memories from uh, A2B2 to A1B1. Now basically I have to take everything out again, cut this part and I should be able to close this thing. This is the result. In uh, front I have the cigarette lighter, it works nicely. Uh, this shelf at the moment is a bit broken. I managed to fit the water cooling in here. It opens like this and closes back up as well. Even though the radiator, the pump and the reservoir are in the back here, then it works really nicely. So the water cooling routing, one goes here from the um, CPU block to the radiator. And the other one I had to put 90 degrees to get it close to the hinges and then it goes from here into the water pump. So these are the water connections that I made. All the cabling here I had to put a 90 degree one because otherwise it would hit the shelf. My uh, biggest regret here is that I should have gone with the ITX motherboard because also the RAM sticks are hitting here so I had to shave off more and unfortunately the shelf had a spring on this side as well I haven't managed to restore it maybe you can see here is like a hole and here used to be the spring so now when I press the shelf it doesn't pop out anymore so I have to help it a bit on the other side there is still a spring but it's not enough to open it otherwise the shelf works just it doesn't pop open at the moment. But apparently on newer boards you cannot populate A1, B1 slot because it won't even uh, boot. So you have to populate A2, B2 slots and the B2 slot was exactly too far. It was literally like half a centimeter. So I got really frustrated. The reservoir is mounted on the back here, the power lines fit, though I had to get extensions for all the power lines as you can see the colors change because it just is too long of a route. I'm really happy with the look of it, it's very clean. The CPU power also I put behind the motherboard here and uh, the VGA power, like all the power cords, all the wires they go like this. So opening and closing 
uh, it's very nice they all tuck in and fit temperature wise so far everything is okay as you can see in the back here I cut this out and I made it a bit nicer now and I managed to keep all the original back panels as well initially from outside uh, only this rare part and this part here would uh, reveal it. I won't be using these otherwise it would be a problem this edge here. Also during the build I managed to break uh, this tab here right there's these tabs I didn't do anything you know weird with it to cause it to break but yeah, overall I'm really happy with it I wired in the power button as well so it goes from here and uh, there's no electronic changes that you need to do you just have to find the correct pins and if you're wondering why I ran from the video card to the CPU like this, like with this long loop, why not from this side? It is because it's really close fit. So if I close it, but let me get the better angle, then there is absolutely no room here. Like impressive, it's like, oh, it's a boring old Mac and then you like rip it open and all these. Back here I also I soldiered in, I sacrificed one of these to create nice clean connections for this cigarette lighter. If you're not planning to put anything here, then you can easily get micro ATX uh, motherboard, then it's absolutely no problem to fit it. If you want to have anything here in this uh, drive base, then you should get an ITX motherboard, it would have been so much easier. Like yeah, really this MATX motherboard size I think was the worst decision or the biggest mistake if I had just got an ITX motherboard I wouldn't need angle here I wouldn't have had to grind from here so much it would have been so much easier this is my Dell Optiplex 7040 tower that has been modified it has an water cooler on top it has a 3070 in it a video card it's fully water cooled uh, in the front you can see there's a hole because it used to have a Radeon 290X video card and it just wouldn't fit inside so I made a gap for it. Uh, the nice thing about this is that uh, the original way of how you can maintain it is still there. So I can still use the normal cover and I can still remove the front panel. Uh, factory and I can also open it up very nicely and here you can see that water cooling loop inside tiny and actually this radiator was enough to cool it I also have a fan and water pump controller here I managed to fry the motherboard because I plugged this adapter in the wrong way uh, originally this adapter this 8 pin one so it takes regular ATX and then turns it into this 8-pin one which Dell uses on their motherboards. Uh, so for 7040 uh, it had 8-pin plug but I have at some point upgraded the motherboard and CPU. It actually has a 5060 or 5060 Dell mid-tower motherboard in it. Uh, it fit with minor modifications to the back panel but this one has a 6-pin connector. And what happened is that I plugged it in this way, but it actually needs to be plugged in like this. This uh, has served me really well, it works great, but now it's time for it to go.